Berg steigen. Anything can happen when mountain climbing and of course when alpine climbing too. It's important to react professionally. A professional reaction after an accident is to get the injured person out of the danger zone, then provide appropriate first aid, and then make an emergency call. The best number for the emergency call is 911, as this will connect you to a call center using an available cell network. During the call itself, you should say where you are and what's happened. You can also say what the weather conditions are to enable planning for a helicopter if necessary. When attending to an injured or unconscious person, your first priority should be to ensure your own safety first. You need to check whether there could be hazards, such as falling rocks or lightning strikes, whether these represent a danger to the patient, and whether it's even possible to get close to the injured person. If there is a risk for the patient and it's possible to get close to them, they should be taken out of the immediate danger zone and transferred to a safe location. After the injured person has been brought to a safe location, you should check whether they're conscious by talking to them and shaking them. If the patient does not react, they are unconscious. Unconsciousness is a critical condition and you should therefore place an emergency call or call for assistance immediately. If the person is injured and unconscious, you should now use the ABCD system. This is a specific procedure during an emergency situation and ensures you don't overlook any life-threatening dangers. If you can't make an emergency call with your cell phone, then you need to call for assistance. You should use the whistle on your backpack's chest strap. Or if it's dark, you should use the Alpine emergency signal with your headlamp. The Alpine emergency signal is six signals a minute at regular intervals. Do this with either a whistle or use a light signal. After an accident, you always need to bear in mind that the patient may be in shock. This means they need exceptionally good care. This means counteracting shock in the classical sense by getting them in the correct position, that is, elevating their legs. Wrap them up nice and warm and provide good personal support. Talk to them, cheer them up, and fill the time until a professional rescue team arrives. If you have an emergency card with you, fill it in with the patient's personal details, the time of accident and how it happened. This will also make things significantly easier for the professional rescue team. Once you've alerted the helicopter, you should prepare everything for it to land nearby. This means you should remove all items that might be blown away during landing and you prepare the patient so that they don't pick up further injuries due to the wind and strong gusts. When the helicopter approaches, you should clearly draw attention to yourself by waving or calling the crew. When it's nearby, you should make a Y shape, which clearly signals, yes, land here. You should stand to one side at the landing area with your back to the wind. When it lands, you should stay in the same place, as this is a reference point for the pilot. If necessary, kneel down. Be aware of the downwash, which will be very strong. That means you should put your jacket on and hood up. When the helicopter has landed, you should make eye contact with the crew. Only approach or move toward the helicopter door if the crew says so. Warning, the helicopter's danger zone is at the back around the tail rotor and in any area where there is sideways movement above. If you can't make an emergency call with your cell phone, and no one reacts to the Alpine emergency signal, 
At some point, you'll need to decide whether to get help. This means deciding to leave the patient alone. You should do so if the situation is so unfavorable that not only the patient, but you, the rescuer, are in danger too.